Hey guys, Big Dan Bates here from Bates Photography on the road, and today we're here to talk about RV mattress upgrades, but not just any RV mattress upgrade. We found a place that makes RV-specific luxury mattresses that you won't believe until you try them. Stay tuned. All right, so first things first, let's address the elephant in the room, and no, I don't mean me. I'm talking about this giant wad of galls on my face. So I did have surgery this morning, not, no big deal. They removed a basal cell carcinoma, which is a fancy term for nodular skin cancer. So it basically grows in a little nodule that has a root, kind of, I guess, like a wart would have, and they just dig it out of your face, and once they see that they've got it all, you're done. It's clear, no follow-ups, no nothing. Um, what it has caused was I was hoping to make this full video today. I was very excited about getting our new mattress out and bringing it in here. Uh, but because they had some issues where they had nicked some vessels, I was bleeding. So I'm not allowed to do anything lab laborious today. But what struck me is I had to get in here and make the intro to this video because there's a whole modification we need to talk about before we even bring that mattress in here. So that work had already been done, but I wanna go over it with you guys and let you know what's happening. So how did we get here? Well, when we first bought our RV, naturally, the first thing we did was change that thing they call a mattress to a real mattress. And it was a little softer than we had hoped it would have been. And the issue is, is the space where our mattress goes, it's supposed to fit a residential queen, but it's actually 63 inches wide. So a residential queen, which is 60, but not really. And we'll talk about that when we get back there. There's some weird numbers in manufacturing, things that happen. So it ended up being like 57 inches through my door. So once we put it in place, we had a significant gaps on both sides. And then my wife, who can be a little more um, particular about things, she felt it was disturbing her sleep. I slid it all the way over to accommodate her. Now my gap was even bigger and I, I was fine. I would just have to shove some pillows in it or whatever. But it was unusual. I definitely felt like we were being short at sleeping space. And um, so we figured we've been RVing for a year now on the road. And I have some, some spine issues and things where I'm going from the real soft bed from the camper to the real hard bed in the house. And it was taking me a day or two to transition. And uh, anyway, we decided a year in, it was time to try to solve this problem. So, um, this couple, Kaylee and Josh, they go by Freedom Theory on YouTube. They're old school, full-time RVers. They were one of the first ones to, to go to YouTube uh, with their story and their adventures as far as the, the full-time RV community, all the different people we wait for on Sunday night. They were like some of the original folks. Um, they recently had two terrible things happen to them. Now, they're full-timers, and it's, it's Kaylee and Josh, and they have a toddler and an infant. And they just have had a string of of luck. I mean, the both kids they were they were there were pregnancy issues and struggles, and, and then now recently they had a huge tree come down and crush their momentum. They get into a brand new solitude. Everybody was okay. They get into a brand new solitude. The solitude has some defect in the wiring in the in the underbelly. Two weeks into the solitude, the thing burns to the ground again. Everybody was okay. Thank God. So just trying to reconnect and reach out and, and see how they are and how things are going now, my wife stumbled across one of Kaylee's videos addressing this exact issue. Uh, it's RV weird size mattresses. Even ones that are a residential this or that, it's oftentimes the little holes and nooks that these mattresses go in, they don't fit in. And you know it can cause some issues uh, potentially. So there is a company out there Wilderness RV luxury mattresses that accommodate the RV community. They make RV mattresses of, of a high grade, comfortable, real mattresses, specifically with the ideas of these strange size cubbies and nooks and crannies that RV people deal with. So we ordered us a, uh, it's referred to as an Olympic queen. It's actually a thing. It's a 66 by 80. So the space between my cabinets are 63. Again, we'll go out when we get back there, but by the time the manufacturing's done, that 66 is probably going to be around 64. Now, it might be a true 66. You know, there is a chance that somebody accommodates for manufacturing so that post-manufacturing, your final product, is true to size. 
We'll find out once we get it in here and get it unwrapped. I'm going to measure it to see so you guys are informed if you order a mattress from there. So we're very excited about this mattress. Of course, I'll link them below as well as Freedom Theory. Now, this is a non-affiliated, non-sponsored type of a review, I guess you could call it. Um, we were just so excited to find something that fixed or solved the problem we were having and actually suited us. And we got so excited about it, we wanted to make a video because they have various types of mattresses, your classic memory foam, things like that. We got, again, the Montana Hybrid. It has the springs in it, so it's more of a true mattress. Uh, and they even do the bunkhouse stuff, which I may have mentioned. I tend to repeat myself. Uh, but all that being said, before I get any more long-winded, let's head in back here and talk about this modification, and then we'll get to the mattress itself. So here's what we have. What I had to do here, uh, this up here is the original factory install piece of OSB or oriented strand board. And they use this in these types of applications because it is literally strands of wood that are layered together in an oriented manner uh, with some glue and pressed tightly with heat to cure it. And this tends to be, it doesn't stand up to, to water or dampness like plywood does, but it's more rigid and less prone to warping and splintering and things like that. So for a, a high tension situation where you're putting pressure on it, OSB is the way to go for that. So you get yourself a cheap $13 piece of OSB from, from the depot or Lowe's. And uh, so what we had here was, you see this OSB here, it goes across and there's that kind of finished brown laminate here and there. And with the uh, original piece here, it was 52 inches. So a queen is 60. So that was giving you, well, we're going to talk about those weird numbers I was mentioning. Uh, but just for easy math, 60 inches, that gave you a full uh, four inch overhang on each side. And with a super soft mattress, that was just no bueno. I mean, it would just droop when you want to get out of bed. It would sort of just fall over and kind of throw you up, which was kind of neat in a way. It was like an assisted standing, uh, but it, it wasn't good. So it was undersized to begin with. Let's talk about size. So uh, we'll say use a queen because that's what I'm set up here. We'll use a queen as the example, but this is across the board. Residential queen is 60 wide by 80 long. Now, in any type of manufacturing, when you start out with raw product and end up with finished product, the size is what's called nominal size. So if you are familiar with lumber, you buy a two by four. Well, it's not a two by four. It's a one and a half by three and a half. They start out with a raw hunk of two by four lumber, and then they mill it so it's smooth and it has that little shape on the rounded corners and all. By the time they're done, it's inch and a half by three and a half. You get a piece of pine planking for a shelf. It's a one by 12. It's not, it's a three quarter by 11 and a half or 11 and a quarter, depending on which, uh, where you buy your wood. If you buy a tarp, same situation. An eight by 10 tarp is actually only nine and a half by seven and a half because they cut it eight by 10 and then they roll up the outer seams and stitch them to be heavier reinforced for the, the eyelets. So anytime you have the finished product is never the same size. So the queen that we purchased, which was the beauty rest, came in my door at around 57 inches, and not 60. It started at 60 by the time it was finished and beat it and tucked and trimmed, it came in around 57. So this space between these two cabinets is 63 inches. So a queen, you're already looking at a gap on both sides with the queen, even if it was a true 60 inch queen, which I doubt exists, you're still talking about gapage on both sides. And then my wife was having difficulty with the gapage, so we slid everything to her way. Now my gap was twice as big, and I find in the middle of the night, my arms would be down in the hole or my apnea machine would be in the hole. And it, was, it wasn't horrible problems that we couldn't just deal with, but it definitely, I definitely felt I needed to have a solution. I'm a problem solver and I need to find solutions to things. So we found Wilderness RV mattress and we have purchased a 66 inch wide by 80. Uh, that is actually referred to, that evidently is a thing and it's referred to as Olympic Queen. So sheets are available for it, um, just in case you're curious. Uh, it's referred to as an Olympic Queen. And so, Again, I'm imagining that's going to come in around 64 inches. Um, 
63. So this space is 63. If it comes in 64, you know, we'll have to press it a little bit up in here, but that'll be fine because we'll get full coverage. But here's, here's the more important thing is that you have to modify this bottom hinge section. Now for us, this top goes wall to wall. So I didn't have to do anything up here. I have plenty of decking, but the hinged area stopped only 52 inches. So if the, let's say this queen came in at, at 64, you're, you're talking 14 inches. That's seven inch overhang on each side. Even with a, a firm mattress, that is not acceptable. So I had to make this modification. So simple and short as I can be about it, on my particular one, we have these little mounts here and here that are for the plungers underneath, and we have these hinge screws. So I just took off the hinge screws, opened this up, unbolted the plungers, and that was it. It was free to go. There's a little block of wood under here that the um, hinges screw into. I just took that with it, took it out of here, pried that block of wood off, laid it on top of my new piece of OSB, lined up this edge here, the factory edge, flush with that factory edge. So that was a nice, clean, even straight line. Anytime you're trying to butt something up together, you want to use the factory edges that are perfectly straight. Laid it out, measured out my distance that way and distance this way, but I wanted to extend it to meet my new need. Uh, in this case, I made it 60. Now, Making it 60 is still, if this comes in at 64, it's still giving me two inches of over, overhang on each side, but that's actually correct. You want one to two inches of overhang, if for nothing else, to protect your shins from this raw plywood, which will take the skin right off your shins. Um, and, and it's just, it's, it's how it's designed. So the, the one, the other one, 52 inches, which was leaving us a four inch overhang, was undersized to begin with. So I made this 60, so uh, I, I set it down, measured out my four inches that way, four inches this way, made my marks, used a square, a, a T-square, drew my lines out. I traced the foot end of it, and then um, at that point, this was centered up, my lines were made. I pre-drilled the holes for my mounts, and then uh, marked uh, with an awl where the screws for my hinges were going to go. I popped a piece of wood off the back of the old one, and I literally stapled it on the same type of staples they use there. I have it work. I stapled it on to the new block of wood, and then I reinforced it with some uh, screws, actually, as well. And then when I brought it back here, because I did, all, I did that extra step of why it was lined up and centered, pre-drilled and pre-marked everything, that when I brought it back here, it hooked right up like factory. So now I have this deck here, that is appropriate size for the new mattress. I did have to, that corner trim, that caps that corner over there on this side, I did a trim back like two inches on each side, three inches on each side, uh, but that was easy peasy. It's just a foam core, it's not even wood, it's like a foam core board wrapped with paper, like a sticker, just a straight edge razor, a razor knife, scored a couple times, came right off. So that's it. So this modification is installed and ready for the mattress. So, um, as soon as I, I feel up to doing the mattress, which of course for you, it'll be three seconds from now, but as soon as I feel like getting that mattress in here this weekend, we're gonna show you how it ships, how we install it, taking it out of the bag the whole nine yards. And then I wanna do a final measurement of that mattress to see, okay, for this company, if you order a 66, it's coming through your door at 64, 65, 66, whatever it may be, so that you have that information so when you order your mattress, uh, regardless where it's from, you have an understanding of there's a size difference from what you're actually ordering. But for this company in particular, I can give you the exact measurement that that mattress came in at, so you can be better informed. Now, for intensive purposes of the video, let's go get the mattress. All right, well, we're back. I'm down to a Band-Aid, feeling pretty good. I lugged that thing in here, and we're about to go back here and cut it open. And uh, but my, it was an interesting thing how this thing got delivered. Now, I've had issues with FedEx before. We had a commissioned photograph from Bermuda. Twice had it printed on glass. Both times shipped FedEx. Both times lost. So tell them what you saw when they showed up. <laughs> well, you guys will see the footage, okay? It just looked like, I don't know, it was some sort of garbage. And it was open on the one side. Thank goodness this thing is like vacuum sealed and then folded in half because otherwise I think it would have been easy for that thing to fall out 
and just get lost forever. And when you make an investment in a mattress, you want to receive your mattress. So we received it. It just was a little bit um, sketchy. So this mattress, um, I'm going to say this is on the fault of FedEx, but look at this thing, guys. <laughs> Thank goodness it's in plastic because this thing is literally open. Wow. Pretty wild, but again, it's in plastic, so I am gonna guess that this is not from the company that way. Yeah, the it looks like whoever working for FedEx delivered it was a little feeble and didn't eat his Wheaties. <laughs> and it was we've had terrible storms here in the Northeast, major flooding, everything. This guy oh. drugged this thing through the puddles and rain, never bothered even to lift it up, drug it up my driveway, across the gravel, and put it on my doorstep. It was so bad, not only was the box open and worn through from being drugged, there was actually a part that the, luckily this was wrapped heavy duty with plastic, where from dragging it, it, it went through the cardboard and into the plastic and actually almost broke the vacuum seal, which would have been a disaster because the thing would have just expanded right there on the, in the driveway. <laughs> Fortunately, all is well, uh, folks, all is well. Incompetence. Anyway. So let's, let's head to the bedroom. Watch this. Jump onto the bedroom cam and check out the unrolling. Hold that on that bead. So am I, do you want to hear or do you, it's more like here. I know, I know, the bead. 65 inches. So. Well, the manufacturing, it always gets a little smaller. Um, but I said I'm going to take the actual measurement. 65. Now, we have a little bulge here. But the more <laughs> it rises, yeah. the more that's going to be straight. Well, so we have to give it probably like 24 hours. 65 inches. Yes. Yeah, so. I just wanted to get in for now. Wow, babe, this was exactly what we needed, right? All right, so just because there may be some off gassing, Let's to get that little bit of smell, here. we're going to open up all of our vents here. It's a nice day. Plus, we have the vent max cover, so the rain won't bother us anyway. It's been storming like crazy here in the Northeast. Violent, crazy, nasty storms. So we're going to let this... Wow. Uh, gas off that just filled up that whole space and it was perfect uh this, yeah. this is exactly what we, what we needed did i do good did mama do good yeah you did this is exactly all what right we needed. We gotta let it finish fluffing and then we'll come back now like i've said several times we're going to start having drinking games in my videos every time i repeat myself take a shot but uh this is a thing this size it's called an olympic queen we do have a sheet uh, that will fit this one. Yeah, oh, sorry. sorry. We do have a sheet that will fit this, but we have a Jersey Sheet Queen that's very, very stretchy. And this is that might like a 10 inch mattress, but that's made for up to like an 18. So we may be able to just that get it on here. It, yeah. Um, but we'll see when we come back. All right, guys, there it is. Our actual sheet did fit it. We have, we like the jersey sheets. It's like cotton t-shirt material. You get them, you know, the sheet aisle at Target or Walmart or wherever they come in the little kind of satchel. They're really, really stretchy. And we get the deep pocket ones made for like an 18 inch mattress. This is a 10 inch mattress. So between the stretchiness and the fact that it has a larger pocket uh, wall width, it actually fit on perfectly. So again, we do have sheets that are made to fit it, but, uh, we prefer the, the jersey sheet, so there you go. It's complete. There is still a little off-gassing going on. There's that little smell, that memory foam, and, and it's from the memory foam. Uh, that That's the, whatever they use to make it off-gasses once you unwrap it. So there's a little bit of off-gassing going on. I want to throw the fan back on, let it air out, but that's pretty much a wrap. We'll uh, give you an update after we sleep on it through this next big main trip we're going to. Uh, we'll, we'll give it a week 
see how we feel, how we like it, and we'll give you guys an update.